Alright, I can slide the focus mount in here. It only goes in one way. If I hold it up from underneath, I should be able to get the fixing screws in place. Four screws hold this in position. Make sure these little arms here are pressed back out of the way. Those arms are there to prevent you from uh, folding the camera unless the focus has been returned to the infinity position. It's like a lot of good measures, you can defeat it either with a lot of force or by cunning and then you end up in strife. Right, those four screws are in position. I'll just do those four screws up. And while I've got it in that position, I can put the four screws through that hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Four black screws. One pretty much in each corner. Here you are pulling up against the frame on the bellows but you've got a layer of leather and felt in between you and it so it won't just do up tight like two metal surfaces coming together. So don't overdo it. If you're expecting the screws to suddenly stop turning you're going to end up snapping them off. Right, so that's, that's all back together. Our bellows are now firmly attached to the front standard. That part's done and can continue getting the focus mount into here. Or the focus helical rather. Right, I'll get the inner and outer helical running together and I'm checking my alignment marks to see how well I've done. And it's not looking very promising. I think, you know, I think I'm miles out. Start that at a quarter of a turn round and see where we are. That's better. Okay. So at this point, with the front surfaces level with each other, my two alignment marks are aligned here and here. And the single alignment mark is aligned across here. So I know that that's in the best, that's in the right position. Now that was, um, that was quickly done. That was, was luck as much as anything else. I knew it needed about a quarter of a turn. And that's what I did. And I was lucky. I was just lucky. You could have easily have been one notch out with a multi-start thread like that and have to make another adjustment. So I just put a bit of naphtha onto that, uh, helical and I'm just working that. Now these parts have all been through the ultrasonic cleaner so they've been degreased, they've been through uh, a strong domestic detergent in the ultrasonic cleaner and that has removed all the old grease and hopefully dust and other rubbish at the same time. But it does mean that there's no lubricant here. So I've cleaned these, I'm working that with a bit of naphtha and it sort of polishes that brass. It um, often just Probably rubs down some minute high spots. But anyway, that, that's moving nice and smoothly. And uh, I can put some helical grease on there now. And I want I want that right now. Helimax XP is the stuff. And you don't need buckets of it. Typically I put a white in about five or six places around the outside there I 
I'll just work that in. That's nice and smooth. Run some around the outside edge here. That's where it sits down into the mount. And where it runs on the guides in the mount, that's the two spots with little holes in it there. Let's put a wipe in there and a wipe in there so that those guide posts will line up correctly. Now because I have two marks at the base and one mark at the top I know which way up this goes so that it'll go back into the mount the correct way and I can check to see if it moves smoothly. That seems to be very good. So the retainer can go on there now. And the retainer that wants a wipe of grease too, where it's going to hold down that edge. And it doesn't need much. Now I'm using the helical grease to do this. Because I've got it out and present. I could just as easily use something else. Where are we? That goes on that way round. It'll only go on one way. And I can start putting the screws in. There are six screws that hold this in place. And there are four screws exactly the same which hold the focus scale ring in place once we get to that point. So we'll get these six screws started first. Now here I've got the inner helical sticking out proud of the outer helical which is good if it was the other way around and you did these screws up tight you'd probably find that the inner helical was bound up against the back of the mount and uh, the focus wouldn't want to move Right, that's our six screws. I'll just collapse that front down. Nip those six screws up. You don't need to go mad doing up the screws. And check to see if that focus moves smoothly. It does. I wouldn't say it was loose, but it does move smoothly. That's good. Well that can have the focus scale ring put on there next. We have our alignment marks on the focus scale ring that I described on there earlier so I can get those lined up. Now these screws clamp the outer helical and the focus scale ring together and you do not want to just rip in and tighten these down tight because all you'll do is end up distorting the outer helical and making the focus incredibly stiff. So I'll just run those screws down lightly. With them all in position, I'll just slacken those back a bit. I can have one last look at my alignment marks and make sure I've got them to my satisfaction. That looks good. And just nip those screws up. You do not need to crank down on those screws. Right, so there's our focus. It's all moving smoothly. And we can put the bracket on here that has the arm for the range finder. So we'll just feed that in. There's two screws hold that to the inner helical. They're very small ones. They'll be the smallest screws we're taking out of the body today.
Yeah, here I'm supporting the front standard between finger and thumb so I'm not collapsing the, the struts as I do those screws up. There's a single screw at the top that connects that uh, to that bracket, the arm on that bracket. And this is the stud that moves the arm on the rangefinder. So as you move the focus scale ring you'll see that that moves in and out. That's all good. So I think we can put the shaft, the coupling on the front here for the, uh, it cocks the shutter, partially collapse that front down and we'll get this in place. Right, well I'll take this shaft and gear, I'll run a little bit of synthetic grease up the centre, some on the shaft, just a light wipe on the outside. There's a support bush that runs through there. I'll get this on the shaft, like that. And then there's the little shroud that goes over it with our M and X sink marks on it. I'll get a screw started at the top. And one at the bottom. The one at the bottom is hard to see. If you make a mess of one of these screws, put it down here. No one's ever going to see it. Keep the good screw for the top position. Right, so that's all coupled. And that couples to the gear at the top of the camera. And you can see it rotates here. Well that part's all looking good. At that stage I could put the door on the front of the camera. Alright, time to put this front door on here I suppose. So, I'll start with a bit of synthetic grease. And I'll just put it on the, the arms there. Mostly so that it holds the fibre washers or the uh, they're not fibre so much as the cartridge paper washers. I just want those to be held in position. Because they're fairly easily, da easily damaged. And uh, it's easy to damage them wriggling the door onto the camera. Let's get this going. So normally I hook it onto the, into the slot at the top. Stretch the door out and allow it to drop into the slot at the bottom. There we have it. So we've got pivot pins top and bottom and we had washers, spacer washers in there. We had one at the top and one at the bottom. We had a thin one at the top in this case from memory. So I'll just line up that washer and the hinge Drop the screw in there, get that started, that's good. Flip the door over, flip the camera over rather. And the thicker washer was at the bottom. So I'm going to slide that in. between the door and the body, line it up with my tweezers, drop the hinge pin screw in place, see if that'll start, that's running in nicely, do that up tight, that should be our door. That opens and closes, no, no play, nothing there, it's running smoothly. Right, so I'll put a bit of grease on those slots now, that one, that one, There and there.
that opens smoothly and there's no rattle no rattle in the door no rattle in the lens standard which is all, all to the good so everything's nice and firm there the struts are all back in the camera body that part of the job is done I can turn my attention to the film advance components so to do the film advance components I want to put the advance shaft in first I've got the take up spool here with its metal bush in place the bush of course goes to the bottom and I have my advance shaft here come on video camera keep up that's better with its three fixing screws now this I usually lubricate this with some graphite grease because I like the feel of it um, you could use other things but it's the best I've got for doing this job and that's why I use it so I'll pull back that spring apply some grease above the bush Do the same below it. This grease is quite tacky, it tends to stay where it's put. And I know that that bush is nicely lubricated. I'll apply some to the spring so that as the coils of the spring are wound up tight, they move smoothly over each other. That looks fine. This spring's a bit stretched here. It's a bit inclined to want to come out of the slot, which could be a nuisance when I'm trying to fit it. Anyways, bring the camera back in. And I can drop this into the take up spool. I'm not sure that that's going all the way into the spool. That spring may be. No, that's all right now. Yeah, that's okay. I thought the spring had shifted and was failing to uh, line up with the slot. That's okay. We're in business. Three screws hold this in place. Right, with them all in place, I can tighten those three screws up. And check that the shaft moves freely. It certainly appears to. That's all good. Now I want my rewind button catch. I'm just going to run some molybdenum paste around the tip of that, some through the, uh, the centre, since I've got it there in my hand. Fit that into place. Here's its return spring and the shoulder screw. Can't quite see what I'm doing here because that leather on the camera base is flapping up in the air. It's blocking my vision. Here how that started. Make sure that spring and the lever itself runs round the shoulders on the screw. 
that's fine, I can nip that up tight. The spring I've got to lift into position. I want another pair of tweezers for that. These ones will do nicely. I'm going to lift this spring round to this side of the lever. Now that's sprung loaded. I think the, the uh, sprocket shaft could go in now. Here's our sprocket shaft. I'll apply some grease to the shaft towards the bottom, towards the top where it passes through the camera body, and just I'm putting some on that little pinion at the top. Sprocket in place, slot side up. Get that shaft in. I'll just line that up from below. That's better. Pull that arm back. That allows it to drop into place. Okay, so that's all up in position. There's a screw that passes through the slot in the sprocket onto, and it drives, connects to the uh, sprocket shaft. And that's how the sprocket shaft is driven. The, the sprocket is driven by that screw. Let's see if we can get that started. This is sometimes awkward. Um, if it doesn't start smoothly, revolve the shaft 180 degrees and try from the other side. Sometimes there's a better lead in on one side than the other. Okay, so that's in. That's all good. What about the rewind button? I think we could do that next. So let's get this rewind button in. Normally I just put some synthetic grease into the spring. Put that on the rewind button. Put the washer on the rewind button, support the shaft from the top with my finger and get that rewind button screwed in place. You're just checking that that press is in fine, it did. If I pull that lever back it'll pop back, that's good. So I've got to tighten that with a pair of pliers. That's good. So the tripod socket can go on the base. You can usually tell these three screws because they'll be the ones that have got the adhesive on them or scraps of leather or both. Okay, three screws are in place so I can tighten them up. Now the little cover here that goes over the rewind button has a couple of ears on it to stop you accidentally bumping the rewind button. The earliest examples of the Retina 2A didn't have those ears. It was exceptionally easy to bump that rewind button simply by putting the camera down on the table. Let's get these screws in place. Tighten them up. 
I can glue the leather down to the base of the camera now because we're done there. So I'll apply some adhesive to the leather. That leather's a little bit uh, delaminated, but the adhesive will hold all that together. Let's make sure I've got good coverage right to the edges. That should do. Get that leather pressed down into place. Make sure that you don't get adhesive down around the rewind button. If you get a big blob of adhesive down there, and it certainly happens, you'll find that that Rewind button will do useful things like unscrew itself and you'll lose it. That looks okay. I'm just going to clean around this with a bit of uh, naphtha. Yeah, there was some on the button there. That's, that's the release button for the door, front door, and I'll just wipe around here to get all the loose adhesive off there around the edges of the leather. Here we go. That looks good. Check that it's all pressed in firmly. That looks great. I think we want our tripod surround back here now. There it is. And there are two small screws that hold that in position. Chrome brass and easily damaged. There's the last of them. This is it. that is the base of the camera dealt with. So, it's certainly starting to look like a camera now. Film advance. I'm just going to lubricate this clutch assembly with some graphite grease. And unfortunately I'm getting near the end of my graphite grease, so I think a few more cameras and I'm going to have to be using something else. We haven't been able to find any lately. Just using a pair of crimp lug pliers to hold this in position. I have to compress the spring to get the clutch together. No, it popped out again. Got to get that tab hooked into the slot, compress the spring, and then get the whole thing. Keep it compressed and slide the outer over it like that, and there we go. There's my clutch. It's nice smooth action in one direction, and that's the, the right direction, so that's all good. Just run some C 
synthetic grease through the center of that. Check that that's engaging with the sprocket, the take up spool it is. And here I've got the top bush, the upper bush for the film advance. There's two little sets of gears on it. And I'm going to force some grease into those. Using a bit of hydraulic pressure. A wipe through the center. Put that in place. And I'll spin the sprocket shaft and the take up spool together to engage those gears. If you don't check that they're fully engaged before you do the screws up, you'll end up damaging something. That all looks good. With the three screws in place, I can tighten them up. While I've got the synthetic grease here, I can apply a little bit to the slot here that the bush, the little connecting bush for the uh, rangefinder runs down. That's fine. And I better do this film rewind next. <laughs> 